Garage. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Gray's Garage. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite cars, the Nissan Skyline. So particularly we're going to be talking about the last four series. So I know there have been more than that, but we're just going to focus in on the last, the newest four series, which is the R35, the GTR, R34, 33, and 32, the 32 being my personal favorite. But we're going to go through these in, in, um, in order and talk about the aerodynamic aids and benefits and design of each one. And then I have tested in R34. I have the model here. It's a Tamiya model again. It's the R34 GTR Z Tune. So it's the Nismo Special Sport Package. And so we're going to show some results um, for the aerodynamic testing of that. But let's begin and talk about the R32. This was produced from 1989 to 1991. It's my personal favorite. However, it's not the greatest in terms of aerodynamics. So the GTST, the two door or four door, had a coefficient of drag of 0.31 to 0.33, and that's pretty good. However, when you move to the GTR, which is the you know, highest performance version of this car, the CD jumps up to 0.4. That's the coefficient of drag. 0.4 is fairly high for a car um, of this shape and design. And there's a couple of reasons why. Um, before I go into that, oh, actually, I want to talk about where I got this information. Um, as you know, I like to get my information from uh, published sources. So I have here a Nissan Skyline GTR Ultimate Portfolio. Uh, it's another one of those por Ultimate Portfolios uh, produced by... Brooklyn Books. It's okay. It doesn't have a lot of information on, on the aerodynamics. It has more information on the mechanical aspects and actually owning a GTR. Um, but I pulled out all the aerodynamic stuff here and that's what we're going to talk about today. So going back to the R32, why does it have such a high drag? Well, there's a few reasons. Um, one is it has really wide tires. So those uh, Bridgestone R30, R71 Potenza tires are very large. And what you may not know is that the wheels and tires on a car contribute anywhere between 25 and 35% of the drag. So the bigger the wheels, the greater that increase in drag. I had a large front air, dra air dam, uh, a large rear spoiler, uh, had very sort of bulging guards on the side and also some side skirts. So that body kit for the GTR on the R32 wasn't very well designed in terms of drag. It may have produced quite a bit of downforce. Uh, I don't have any numbers on that. Um, and to me, it looks beautiful, but um, in terms of aerodynamics, not really the greatest. So I think the Nissan engineers learned from that design. Um, and then when they moved to the R33, it dropped, the CD dropped from 0.4 to 0.35 for the GTR. Um, the R33, in my personal opinion, is kind of ugly. I don't really like the lines and the shape. Um, very much, but um, to each their own. Um, it had a rear wing, it had a deep front splitter, and it also had some subtle side skirts. Um, so again, it had that body kit aero package, but I think they designed it a, a little bit better. Uh, moving on now to the R34. Now I only have some information for the uh, V-Spec GTR. It had a coefficient of drag of 0.36, so a little bit higher than the R33. Um, but that's because it had a more aggressive uh, aerodynamic package. So it had underbody diffusers front and rear. Um, this, these diffusers uh, increase the downforce and increase the stability in a straight line. Um, one of the cool things here is it had an adjustable angle of attack rear wing. So we can show some pictures here. That uh, rear wing, you can actually change the angle of attack, which is the angle that the wing has relative to the oncoming airflow. And that affects the amount of downforce the wing is producing as well as the amount of drag it's producing. So just to give you an idea, um, the R34, that coefficient of drag of 0.36 is exactly the same as an Evo 6. So we show a picture here of the two. Um, they both have fairly aggressive body kits. Um, the Evo looks a little bit more intense in terms of the aerodynamic aids. Um, but I like the way the R34 looks. So this model I have here is the R34. Again, it has the, uh, the Z-Tune uh, body package, but I, I actually really like the way the R34 looks. I think that they, they improved upon the R33 and they really gave it a distinct look. Um, 
So that R34, again, has that sort of aggressive body, uh, body kit, um, aerodynamic package, and it's really aimed at reducing the lift, providing cooling flow um, for the engine and the brakes, and not really about fuel economy. So they're not really talking about um, reducing the drag, and that's sort of a all-encompassing design philosophy for the Skyline. Um, they really were aiming at performance, not really fuel economy. Um, so that means increasing your downforce, increasing your stability, and sacrificing a little bit of that fuel economy. Uh, finally, moving on to the, to the newest version. So it's not called the Skyline anymore. It's just the GTR R35. Um, in my opinion, not really the most beautiful car, um, but technically very gorgeous. So everything, the, the design of it and all the technical stuff is very impressive. Um, but the looks of it, it looks a little bit fat, a little bit heavy in my personal opinion. Um, but the aerodynamics are just aston astonishing. So the coefficient of drag dropped to 0 0.27, which is one of the smallest um, by today's standards. So you can see that such a large drop between the, the older Skylines and the newer. Um, and it has a positive downforce, which means it's actually not producing lift, it's producing a positive downforce, uh, both front and rear. Um, and this is a partly because of the smooth underbody. So this is one thing that car manufacturers are really moving towards, is having a smooth underbody paneling, um, which really increases your downforce and actually reduces your drag. It also has a rear diffuser. Um, so you can show some pictures here. It has a few um, aerodynamic aids. Uh, it has some wheel arch vents. Um, this reduces the pressure around the wheel. And again, I said the wheels contribute anywhere between 25 and 35% of your drag. So that's very significant. Um, that's actually one thing that I focus on here at my research is wheel aerodynamics. How do we make wheels more efficient? Because they're, they're basically the, the biggest producers of drag on cars these days. Um, it also has some NACA air ducts. So this is one design feature that I'll be talking about in a separate video sometime in the future. But NACA air ducts are kind of cool. Um, they're for pulling air into the, um, into the engine or into the cooling of brakes or you know, oil coolers or whatever. But they're, they're kind of a neat device that are used on racing cars mostly. Uh, it does have a, a small front splitter. And again, it has that flat bottom because of the paneling, um, which is really a benefit. So again, very impressive technically, not really, doesn't really float my boat for the, the, the aesthetics. Um, again, I love the R32 and again, the R34. Um, but um, let's go ahead and talk now about the R34 model that I tested in the water channel. So really the only reason why I didn't test an R32 instead of this one is because uh, I was given this model and I thought, hey, why not? Um, this one also has a, a bigger rear wing, so it's kind of interesting to see um, how it goes. Um, as always with the Tamiya models, I was very impressed with the level of detail. Uh, these things are amazing. I have the model here. Uh, so again, it's, it's painted black and um, it does have that sort of aggressive body kit. So one thing in particular is it does have uh, hood vents. So for these tests, I taped them up because I didn't want to have those hood vents. Um, I think only the V-Spec model has that. Uh, so I did actually take the tape off later to see what those hood vents did, and I'll put that in a separate video if you're interested in what hood vents do. Um, but I need to analyze that a little bit more before I publish that information. So um, again, high quality of detail. Uh, I did it with the rear wing on and without it. And um, let's go take a look at some of those results, and uh, hopefully you enjoy. We begin by looking at the overall flow about the vehicle. The front hood vents have been taped up and the rear wing has been removed. This is the flow along the center line of the vehicle and we have bubbles being produced upstream by a wire as well as bubbles being produced on the surface at the rear of the vehicle. So looking at the front we see that we have a stagnation region near the middle of the bumper. The flow moves around the hood of the vehicle and if you look very closely we do get some recirculation at the windshield bonnet junction. This is very common and exists on almost all cars. The flow then moves around the windshield over the top and near the back here is where we get some interesting flow features and this is due to the particular sedan shape of the skyline. So we're going to focus in here at the back because this is the most interesting 
And to really highlight this, we're gonna turn off the bubbles upstream and just look at the bubbles being produced on the surface in the wake of the vehicle. So let's do that now. So here we can see that we've turned the bubbles off upstream and we're just looking at the base flow, which is visualized from the bubbles being produced on the surface uh, at the back of the vehicle. So what we can see is we have two general regions of flow with different flow structures and flow patterns. So the first is along the back windshield. And what we can see is that some bubbles appear to be trapped in a small recirculation bubble and some are being let out, moving downstream in the streamwise direction. The second region is at the base of the vehicle, so near the rear bumper and the rear taillights. And there are two bubbles of opposite orientation of rotation. So there's one clockwise, that's the upper bubble, and there's one moving in the counterclockwise orientation, that's the lower bubble. So we're going to talk about each of these regions and why they occur for a car of this shape. So to get a better understanding of these flow structures, we zoom into the rear of the vehicle. Now let's first talk about the flow along the rear windshield. We can see here that some bubbles seem to be trapped in a small recirculation bubble along the windshield, and some are being let out and moving downstream at high velocity. Now this type of flow structure is very common for a sedan type vehicle, and I have the flow schematic from one of the aerodynamic textbooks here. So what we can see is that the flow along the sides of the vehicle creates two longitudinal vortices, and these sense of rotations actually cause the flow to reattach along the rear trunk, and we get this sort of small recirculation bubble along the rear windshield, and this bubble opens up and lets out flow, and this is what we can see here for the skyline. The second region is the flow along the rear uh, bumper and rear uh, lights. And again, it has two recirculating bubbles of opposite rotational orientation. So the upper one is clockwise and the lower one is counterclockwise. And again, this is very, very common for a sedan type vehicle. We now turn on the bubbles upstream again. And what we can see here is a very strong distinguishing feature between the upstream flow, which is high speed, and the flow that's trapped in the wake of this vehicle. So for the high speed flow coming from upstream, the bubbles are blurred together because they're moving so quickly. So that's the upper region here of the video. But the flow that's trapped in the wake, you can actually see the individual paths of these bubbles, and that's because they're moving at a slower speed. So if you want to put a wing on a rear skyline, on the rear of a skyline, um, for the R34, you want to put it in a high speed flow. So this video here is showing exactly where you need to put that wing, which is right about here, to get access to that high speed flow and move it out of the lower speed wake. So why don't we put on the OEM rear wing and see if it's actually accessing this high speed flow. Let's do that right now. So here we have the rear OEM wing attached and only the bubbles being produced in the wake. And so what we can immediately see is that it appears that the wing is trapped in this slower speed wake uh, some of the time. So you can see how it's very unsteady, it's changing in time. Uh, it looks like the upper portion of the wing may be in the high speed flow some of the time, um, but the lo lower half of the wing is definitely in the wake. So let's turn on the, um, the upstream bubbles and see if this is what we can conclude. So now we have the bubbles upstream on as well and we can see the high speed flow is that area where the bubbles are being blurred and the lower speed flow is the area where the bubbles are actually visible uh, because they're moving at a slower rate. And what we can see is that the OEM wing does seem to be trapped in that lower speed region. Um, the upper portion of the wing may be in the high speed region at some times, um, but the flow is fairly unsteady as you can see it's changing in time. So this really shows that the OEM wing is trapped in sort of that low speed region and that's, this could be because for a couple of reasons. Uh, most likely Nissan didn't want to raise it too high uh, to affect rear view visibility. Um, likely you get a large drag increase when you have it in the high speed flow um, and you don't really need that much downforce for a street car. So they probably opted to keep it lower down and still have some effectiveness, but not maximum effectiveness, which you would really want on a full-blown race car. So now what we want, we want to see is how does this rear wing affect the rest of the flow? 
Well, we can still see that we have, a, you know, a sort of a separation and reattachment along the back windshield, although it does seem to be a little bit larger than before. And we still get the two recirculating bubbles at the base of the vehicle near the rear bumper and the rear taillights. Um, so the overall features seem to be the same. However, the back shield windshield flow seems to be a bit bigger. So let's compare these two side by side. So on the left we have without the wing and on the right we have with the OEM wing. And we only have the bubbles being produced on in the surface and showing the wake. And what we can see is that the flow structures look very, very similar. As I said before, it looks like the wing isn't changing the general structure at the rear of the car very much. Um, so most likely it's producing a modest amount of downforce and not increasing the drag by very much. So finally here, let's compare the two with all the bubbles on, left being without the wing, right being with the wing. And what we can see here is that the rear wing is producing some downforce. And the way we tell this without actually measuring the downforce is the angle of the flow at the rear of the car. So without the wing, you can see at the rear of the car, the high speed flow is angled down. However, with the ring added, that flow is deflected upward. And this upward deflection is actually what's a result of the wing producing some downforce. So you can think of the flow being pushed up and the car being pushed down. Um, so this is a good indication that the wing is working, it's producing some downforce. However, we're not actually measuring the numbers here. Um, we have to do that with a force balance. So maybe I can do that later, um, but for now it's good to see that the wing is actually working. So I hope everyone has enjoyed this episode on one of my favorite cars, the Nissan Skyline. And we've learned a few things here by looking at the R34. Uh, the flow is fairly smooth about the vehicle. Um, because of that sort of sedan shape, we do get some interesting flow structures along the rear windshield and at the back rear bumper and rear taillights. And this flow structure isn't changed very much by the OEM rear wing. Uh, what we did see though is that that wing is in some slower moving flow, um, so it's not as effective as it could be and what you want to do to get maximum downforce is raise that wing up into that high speed uh, external flow and uh, to do that we actually can see where to place the wing, where it needs to be placed. And so I have here a picture where I've actually estimated that height and uh, going any higher wouldn't really give you much more benefit. So this is sort of the height that you really want to place your wing to get maximum downforce and uh, you're gonna have a drag penalty, but you don't need to go higher than that. So that's a cool estimate and a cool result that we got here from the tests. And um, what we also saw is that the OEM rear wing is somewhat effective um, without even having to measure any actual values. We can still see that it deflects the flow up and will create some downforce. Um, so please, if you enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe to me, like me. Uh, the next video will be on uh, Honda Civic uh, hatchback. And uh, if you have any suggestions on which car to do next, please feel free to go to my website and shoot me an email. And uh, if you have a car you really want to test, we can even talk about uh, putting that in the water channel and getting that tested. So stay tuned and have fun. Garage